Hi everybody, Cam Sweet here from the Garage Connection coming to you today. Sick as a dog after our trip home for uh, Christmas and, and whatnot. So to all you people up north, I don't know why you guys live there. We went there and uh, for, for the holidays and my wife's sick, Jonathan's sick, I'm sick, misery, cold. I'm so glad to be back in Florida, I can't even explain it. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna get into this machine here. This is the uh, HY680C. It's basically the red version of the uh, LHY680. It's the big diesel mini skid with the Kubota and all that stuff. This one is owned by a landscape company. They purchased this off me in mid 2025, I wanna say, and they've used it, uh, they love it. It's it's made them a ton of money, but uh, it, it's time to bring it in and, and do some service on it, do some upgrades on it. So we're gonna do that today. We're gonna talk about what we're gonna do. We're talking about how we're gonna do it and talk about a couple things that you can do to really take your machine to the next level if you choose. So stay tuned. So this is the machine as it is now. Um, you know, again, they've, they've used this commercially it doesn't have a ton of hours on it, uh, but by the nature of the work that they do, it's really, you know, start it up, use it, shut it back off. So the hour meter is showing like 16 or, or so hours on it, but uh, but she's been on dozens of jobs now, and uh, and they're very, very happy with it. Um, it's got a couple of issues with it, though, that we're going to address. Uh, one of them is going to be a warranty claim. So this is the this is the fuel filter, and, you know, no big deal, the fuel filter itself it's just held on by a little bracket here that bolts to these two holes and the bracket just snapped it's not really uh, i've seen it happen before so we're going to go ahead and get that squared away for them we're also going to take a look at the drive pumps uh, there's nothing wrong with the drive pumps but we're going to talk about how to how to do some adjustments to improve this machine and then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to be adding float to it the float thing is kind of a, a hot topic essentially the Huawei machines don't come with float now how you feel about that is is sort of up to you i don't think it's really that big of a deal i've never found a reason for me to use float on a, on a mini skid the big skids tractors you know front end loaders yes but as far as the mini skid i've never found a reason to use one but you know guys plowing snow guys with attachments that have wheels on them that follow the ground it is nice to have that feature so what we're going to be doing we're going to add float we're going to do it electronically we're not going to do it by changing the uh directional control valve to have a float spool in there. We're actually gonna add a diverter valve. We're gonna talk about the hydraulics behind doing that and, uh, and, then, and then put it all in. So the first thing we gotta do though, we're gonna have to take this machine, get it up off the ground, and we're gonna take a look at the, uh, the tracks, the, the speed of the tracks, and what we can do to maybe make some adjustments to that. We had to go to Harbor Freight this morning to uh, my beloved uh, Daytona floor jack finally Finally gave up after many, many years of abuse and neglect. So got a brand new shiny blue one there. We're gonna see if uh, four tons is enough to lift this machine. That's definitely not four tons. And we're gonna get it up off the ground and put it on some jack stands. I'm pretty sure I have COVID because everything tastes weird and I, I don't have any energy to do anything. I mean, it took everything I had to, to go to the post office uh, the other day and drop off some packages, so. I thought COVID was over, I guess not. All right, that's one half of it. It's very important you do not trust the hydraulics uh, to hold this machine up. Always want to use some sort of a positive control. Not only that, we're going to raise the arms up as high as we can go too. Okay, that should get us a uh, big step in the right direction. All right, so on these uh, triple stack hydraulic pumps here, so we've got two pumps. This pump does one wheel motor. The pump back here does another wheel motor, and then this one over here is gonna do uh, your, your auxiliaries and your lift arms. So the deal with these pumps, uh, and, and this you can only do this with this style. You can't do it with the big giant one where it's got one pump and then it's got all the little valves. You can't do that. There's three different adjustments, okay? You've got, right down here, you've got two screws, set screws on this side, and then on the, on the underside, basically directly opposite of this on the bottom, you've got another set screw. One of these set screws, uh, what it's in charge of doing, it's called the zero displacement set screw, basically. So when you start the machine up, that dictates where the pump is at a, a midpoint. So without your hand on the joystick, 
on and what you would do if you had a machine that you started up and it starts to creep forward or creep backward, you would loosen up the jam nut and you'd adjust it until the tracks, you'd see them go forward and then you'd go the other way on the nut and it would slow down and then it might back up. You basically, you set it till right till it stops. And then you know, okay, that is the zero displacement set screw uh, so that the pumps aren't trying to move without any inputs being given to them. So that's very important to have that uh, set correctly because the machine will just creep forward on you if you do it wrong. Uh, so we're gonna demonstrate what that looks like uh, if, if the set screw is not set correctly. Right, so what we're gonna do, uh, we're going to just briefly move that zero displacement screw just to show you what uh, actually happens in the tracks when you change the position of that screw. I think I got the right size here. Who knows, I gotta, I gotta check it. By the looks of it, they're all actually wrong. Let's see. No, I guess that's, I guess that's gonna be good enough. Two and a half? Yeah, okay, two and a half mil it is. So what's gonna need to happen here is I'm gonna have to start the machine up. I'm gonna have to move uh, one of the screws and figure out what side, what track the screw does. Then I can zoom in on that track and, uh, and then show you what's up. All right. See how it's moving with nothing on the controls? The idea behind that is if you had a machine that was creeping forward in a neutral handle position, you'd manipulate that set screw in order to stop it from uh, continuing to creep forward when nobody's touching the handle. You shouldn't have this problem. I've never seen a machine that does it, but as these things get older, maybe things happen. And um, any, any, any one of these that has this triple pump arrangement that's how you adjust the zero displacement set screw. So the next thing we're gonna do is talk about the max displacement limiter, the fun one. The max displacement limiter, uh, this, is, this is where this video gets a little complicated. So the purpose of this is if you have a machine that tracks uh, more one way than the other. So if you, you pin it all the way forward and it slowly creeps to the right, let's say, what you would do is you would bring the max displacement of the right hand track motor, you'd bring that up a little bit to make it so it goes completely straight. So uh, what I'm not telling you to do is turn the set screws all the way out so that your machine goes twice as fast. That's not what I'm telling you to do. What I'm telling you to do is balance the uh, speed of the drive motors so that it doesn't creep one way or the other and it just goes perfectly straight with the handle all the way forward straight. So with that being said, the adjustment for that, it works pretty much the same as the zero displacement limiter. The ones on the bottom are reverse. So hypothetically, if you wanted to make reverse twice as fast, you'd back out the set screws and reverse to go twice as fast. I'm not a big fan of that. I think reverse should be nice and slow and controlled. Now forward, forward's a different story. Forward, you can do what you want. Um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get my hand tachometer. We're gonna see what this machine does at idle all the way forward on the drive motors. We're gonna see how many RPM we get. And then we're gonna turn the screws up to balance the speed left versus right. And then we're gonna see what it does all the way like that, if you catch my drift. These little hand tacks are pretty handy to, uh, to have if you're doing some, whatever, troubleshooting, you're trying to just figure out the rotational speed of, of whatever. It would appear this one's also dead as a doornail, so let's see. Nine volt, yep, okay. Go ahead and get a new battery in it. At the same time, I don't really use this thing that often. It's also got these uh, little reflective strips here, so you cut off 
cut off a little piece of it and you put it on a whatever part of this that you want to count how many times the thing goes around. We'll see if it even if it even works out for us. We don't we you don't need a big piece either. You can use a nice little tiny strip. So I'll put a new battery in. Let me get a pair of scissors. Get this out the way. Cut off just a little piece. And then put these scissors back immediately so my wife doesn't yell at me. Took them out of the kitchen. Come on, baby. Wow, that didn't work. Jeez, come on. Crazy. Aha. It's gonna be five minutes of me trying to fight with this stupid reflective thing. Okay. Let's try another piece before we right. Alright, I'm gonna have to call in reinforcements on this one to get this piece out of here. This is ridiculous. There we go. Can't get the sticker out. All right, with a little help from the best helper in the world, I've got this off here. So we're gonna put one piece of reflective uh, tape on one part of this cog, and then I'm gonna put another one on the other side. Same deal. Next thing I'm gonna do is uh, create an artificial uh, cruise control here. And I'm gonna go ahead and run this up through here and around the throttle lever, or excuse me, the, the joystick for controlling the speed. Okay. That way I can pull it forward and we can time uh, how many RPM we get out of these track motors. As luck would have it, I think on this side I'm going to be able to hit the, the joystick at the same time as I can shoot the, uh, the RPM, so we'll give that a shot. So you can see it was roughly 36.1 RPM, give or take a little bit. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna introduce a bias on one of the track motors. The easiest one is going to be the uh, this side because it's in the front. So I'm gonna introduce a difference and then we're gonna match the other side to that difference to show you how that's done. All right, so the, the bias we're gonna introduce is gonna be on this screw right here. So I'm gonna break loose this set screw. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just take out, let's say two and a half turns. Oh, that's too small all of a sudden? Okay, let's get a bigger one. Let's try that on. Well, this one's probably too small also. Of course it is. Okay, well, let's get the right size. Okay. So we're gonna do, we're gonna go out, let's say three turns. That's the bias I'm gonna put in. So half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three. Okay, so that is our uh, bias that's inside this now. I'm gonna tighten down this jam screw also, that way, or the jam nut, that way it doesn't move all around. Because of the specific design of this, this particular model um, and getting to that back set screw, it's really not a, a glamorous or glorious uh, procedure. So it's just essentially you're, you got no room, you're under the muffler, and it's kind of a pain. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just put, you know, three turns out on that back set screw. And then uh, we're gonna match the, we're gonna match the easy one to the hard one, if that makes sense. So hopefully I don't overshoot it and make the machine go even faster, because that's not the idea. Had to make a tool. If you guys haven't uh, got on the bandwagon of those induction bolt heaters, sometimes they call them bolt busters, little, electrical coil. It's the best thing I've found for making custom wrenches for custom jobs. If you haven't bought one of those yet, I'll put a, put a link in the description. Buy one. Just buy one. Don't don't even think about it. Just do it. They're absolutely incredible for dealing with stuff like this. And uh, if your truck has a little bit of uh, rust belt on it, it's the only thing that gets the nuts and bolts out easy. 
All right, so it looks like the left side, yeah, the, le the uh, this right side is faster. What I'll do, I'll bring this one up. See how they're both pretty much matched? Look at them. So fooling around with it a little bit is uh, necessary to get, you know, the, the, the track drives uh, even left to right. Uh, the last thing would be to drop it down and do it uh, while it's actually pushing the machine. Um, and that'll give you a, a more realistic representation of, you know, one side versus the other. And if it's favoring one side, then you just adjust that screw and it goes back to uh, where, where it's going nice and straight. Hope this helps you out if you have one of these machines, whether it's, you know, V1000 or, uh, or, uh, well, Huai or one of those KTTA 27s that AGTS. Um, I don't know what other machines have this style pump, but also you can pretty clearly see that that whole two speed drive motor thing really is not that big of a deal when you can just do it with a single speed motor. You just turn the pump up. So, this is going to do it for this one Camp Suite Garage Connection. Thank you very much. Thank you.